a holistic, diverse ministry for the entire family, grounded in love in order to save the lost, disciple believers, build strong families, and be change agents for Christ in the community. We call ourselves Life Changers because when you connect with us, our core values of the welcome, the worship, the word, and the witness will change your life forever. Need a change? The new life experience is simply life-changing. Good evening and welcome to eChurch. I'm Elder Marjorie Fulton and it's a blessing to be with you tonight. I thank God for this privilege and I must acknowledge my bishop and I thank him for the awesome opportunity and for his awesome leadership. And I just wanna thank him for what all he's doing in NLC at this time and bless, pray blessings over him and First Lady. So God bless you, Bishop. Uh, as we start for this on tonight, if I were to ask you, what do you like best about your family, about being a part of your family? What would you say? Would you immediately begin to share about your relationships? Or would you just have to take a moment and think about it? For the past couple of weeks, we've been hearing sermons and teachings about family. And it's all been centered around Bishop's new book, How to Raise a Fabulous Family. In his book, he says that there are five principles that will lead a covenant family into becoming a fabulous family. And they are grace, intentionality, intimacy, empowerment, and life lessons. And he says that it's these five principles that will get you headed in the right direction. So tonight, I'm going to be speaking to you on the principle of intentionality. My subject for tonight is God's intentional love. Pass it on. If you have your Bibles, I'm coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 7, reading from the ESV. And it reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Let us pray. Father God, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this teaching moment. And I pray, Father God, that all that is said tonight will glorify you. Let me decrease as you increase in me. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In this text, Moses is speaking to the Israelites. He's teaching them as they prepared to enter the promised land. And he tells them that they should acknowledge no other God, that there is only one and he alone is God. He then gives them commandments for their families. This plan that he has given was to go from one generation to the next. But how do we do this today, in this day and time? Everyone knows that today we're living in a world of complete confusion and chaos. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Many of us have lost loved ones. Seemingly our children are being killed every day. Suicide has increased, marriages are falling apart, sexual immorality and corruption is on the rise. And we are surrounded by all kinds of temptations and distractions. And with all of that that's going on in the world, 
the God we serve and the God who sees all and knows all still loves us and he loves us unconditionally. No matter where we are on that spectrum and his purposes still stands, not only for us as individuals, but for our families as well. So it's incumbent upon us to strive to invest in what matters to him. And that is, as children of the Most High God, we must be mindful of how we're interacting with him and how we're interacting with our families. We are interacting through prayer and through the word, and we need to be intentional about it. God wants us to be intentional about our relationships and about our families. We serve an intentional God. John 3.16 tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's one of the greatest testaments of his love for us. In his book, in Bishop's book, How to Raise a Fabulous Family, Bishop, he describes the word intentionality. And he says, intentionality is having a sense of direction and knowing where you want to go. Well, we have directions. But sometimes, you know, even if you have good directions, it may not always be easy. Just because you have the directions, sometimes you run into bumps in the road. You know, sometimes there are road blocks, there are detours, and you might even run into some severe, severe stormy weather. I've been there. <laughs> but if you remain, if you remain on the path that you've been given, you don't become discouraged and you don't become distracted. You will, in the end, reach your destination because the plan of God has been set for you. God has a plan. We said earlier the fact that God gave his only son is clear demonstration of how intentional God is about his love for us. You see, God's plan was not an afterthought because there are no afterthoughts with God. Everything with God is a forethought. forethought. It's carefully considered and carefully planned because he, what he does is he begins with the end in mind. And from that end, then everything that happens in your life is saturated with purpose and with meaning to get you to the end that he already had set for you. That means that job that you didn't get, that promotion you wanted and was passed over, the schools closing for a year or a year and a half or whatever, the pandemic, it all had purpose. Everything works in accordance with the will of God. And God knows every one of us what we're doing. He knows what we're going through and he knows what we have been through. Because before we were born, before any of us were born, he knew us. Psalm 139 tells us that my frame was not hidden from him. When I was made in secret, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you saw, your eyes saw my unformed body. He knows each one of us just as he knew Jeremiah. You know, we often quote that scripture, I know the plans uh, I have for you, but we all say that. But do you know Jeremiah 1 and 5 is of one of, also one of the most powerful statements? God told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet. Jeremiah didn't become a prophet 
until decades after he has been he had been born. But God knew exactly what he would be because God had ordained him while he was yet in his mother's womb. Not after he lived his life, not after uh, God found out how obedient he would be, but before he was born, he ordained him to be a prophet. It was intentional. It was in the plan of God. And he took action to get him there by moving him in that direction. Bishop Dudley says that the roadmap for Christians consists of working out your salvation, accepting God's grace and achieving eternal life. And he's always steering you toward that goal. It's God's plan for parents to raise up their children to know, love and walk in God's ways. In Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7, God told the Israelites, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your might. What did he mean to love with all your heart, all your soul and all your might? How, how, when the Bible says that the heart itself is deceitful, I believe that that's a collective meaning, my interpretation. We can't love him with only part of ourselves, but we must love him with our whole life. He wants our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, and our actions in light of our own desires. He wants us to please and to honor him. God wants us to pursue our love for him in every aspect of our daily lives. When we love God in that way, the love, that love, will spill over into our family's life. We're going to be intentional about raising our children. And we're not going to be just praying for our children. We're going to be praying with our children. When we love God with all our hearts intentionally, we're going to teach our children to be respectful. We cannot pass along to others, to anyone, anything that we don't possess or do ourselves. It's a part of God's plan for children to know his commandments. Verse 7 says, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Now, he didn't just say, he didn't say, uh, you just teach them. No, he said we were to diligently teach them. We are to repeat it and repeat it. We are to go over it and over it again. We are to say it again and again. We are to say it until we impress it upon their minds and it penetrates in their hearts. One of the most important things we can do in this lifetime is to prepare our children, the next generation, with the knowledge of God by encouraging them, by teaching them to seek the Lord and to obey the Lord and to know his word. We are to take advantage of every teaching moment. We teach from our lifestyles. They may not read their Bibles. They will read our lives every day. And I repeat that. <laughs> they may not read their Bible, but they will read our lives every day. It's not enough to just intend to do it or to have good intentions to do it. We have to do it. We all know the parable of the two sons. It's, it's recorded in Matthew 21 and uh, 28 through 32. The, where the father asked one of the sons to go and work in the vineyard. And he said, I will not go. 
but he went. And then he went to the other son and he asked him to go and work in the vineyard and he said, I'll go, sir. sir. He, was, he was even very respectful about it. But guess what? He didn't go. That second son probably had good intentions, but he may have been distracted. Or maybe, maybe uh, someone just came along and took his mind onto something else. Anyway, this parable teaches us that promises can never take the place of performance. Bishop Dudley says that distractions are everywhere and we live in a culture that encourages us to give in to those impulses. When we're distracted, listen, listen, we give the enemy an entrance. Do you know that the enemy will come in to our lives and he'll come into our family relationships just for the purpose of aborting the plan of God. Because whether we realize it or not, we're in a war. We're in a war and it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against Satan himself. The moment we decided to follow the plan of God, the moment we decided to be intentional about our family and about our relationships, we entered into warfare. From the beginning of time, Satan has been driving wedges in relationships and he's playing that same game today, trying to drive wedges between families. And his strategy hasn't changed. He hasn't changed one bit. If you remember, he tried to drive a wedge between God and man. Then Adam and Eve, he even drove a wedge between Cain and Abel. He tried to drive a wedge between uh, Job and God uh, to see if Job would reject God when trouble came into his life. <laughs> but Job, Job had faith in God. The one place we try or he tries to enter our lives is in our relationships. And he will use any entry point he can to gain access and to cause division. What he wants is for you, your spouse or your children to put self-love ahead of the love for God and the love for one another. So, because we know that, then we must be mindful of his tactics and not allow anger, resentment, and bitterness to build up in us, no matter how bad the circumstances seem to be, but be willing to intentionally embrace forgiveness. Ephesians 4.27 says, give no opportunity to the devil. You see, we have a choice because we have the ability to defeat him because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So it appears that more than anything else, God wants his family. He wants us to be known for our love for him and for our love for one another. He not only wants us in covenant with him, but to have covenant with our families and to pass it on. God is a God of purpose. In our text, we didn't read, but six, Deuteronomy 6 and 2, it's, we find that the intent for the covenant is so that everyone would fear the Lord throughout their lifetime. Fear him. That's what it says. Fear him. Not be afraid. Don't be scared or terrified, but hold God in the utmost reverence and with the utmost and the highest respect and have a sincere and committed relationship with him. We can make our plans. We have a purpose and we know that God's purpose will always prevail then we know that God has a goal. God has a goal, and that is that we all receive eternal life. 
We too have goals. I do. We want the best for our children. We want them to be successful. But what do you do? What do you do when you've done all that you were commanded to do, all that you know to do, and you did what the scripture said? You diligently taught them. You talked with them when you sat at home, as the scripture said, and you prayed with them, and you followed all of the directions that you were given to the very best of your ability. And then your family, your children begin to act up. They begin to get in trouble. They become, they are get expelled from school and went to jail or go to jail or, and they begin to disrespect people. What do you do? Be angry? You may, but one thing you must do, you must be intentional and express the same unconditional love that God has extended to you. If we love as God has loved us intentionally, we will pass that love on to others. God is intentional. Pass it on. If you're watching and you've made a decision tonight to return or to give your life to Christ, please text the number that's on the screen and one of our ministers will follow up with you. God bless you. Welcome Life Changers and guests. I am here to give you your 411 about what events are happening here at New Life. Life Changers, our holiday schedule is here to make your family time a great time this year. This Friday, we will have Christmas Eve candlelight service at 6 p.m. for the whole family, including a children's story time during the service. Don't miss this special time to honor our Savior. Next Sunday, the 26th, is the next Virtual Family Sunday. That's right, take the time to be with family and friends over the Christmas weekend by streaming our services only. 2022 is around the corner. Our theme is intentional living based on Proverbs 21.5 and we will be intentional in eight areas at start of 2022 with our 21 day Daniel fast and Wednesday revivals. Yes, our Bishop is our speaker for revival. The first three Wednesdays are virtual, but the last three is in person. Don't miss any of it. Our first Sunday of the 2022 year is LCP Appreciation Sunday, when we formally thank all Life Changer Covenant partners for your sacrifice of time and talent in 2021. If you served in any capacity, we are talking to you. LCP Appreciation Sunday is January 2nd. Don't miss it. As you look forward to 2022, asking what's next for my life? Are you needing to pivot in a new direction, but not sure where to begin? Are you asking what on earth am I here for? If that's you, get prepared to go on a 40 day journey that will help guide you to discovering God's purpose for your life. Winter Life Groups start January 26th, and together, New Life will embark on a six-week journey exploring the book, The Purpose Driven Life, What on Earth I'm Here For, by Rick Warren. Stop by the table Sunday to sign up for Life Groups and get your book. We need you for the health ministry. Consider joining our team. You may ask yourself, how do I know if I'm a good fit for the health ministry? Answer these simple three questions to figure out if you're a good fit. 1. Are you interested in maintaining good health, improving self-care, having a good work-life balance? 2. Do you know how to clean small scrapes and apply a band-aid to the area? 3. Can you use your cell phone to dial 911 if asked to do so? If you answered yes to the above three questions, then the health ministry may be a good fit for you. Free CPR and first aid training provided for those who join the health ministry team. A great skill set for church, school, work, or home. Interested? Email 689newlife at gmail.com or call 618-632-6542 to join us. Business owners, we are updating NLC's business directory. If you're interested in being included into the 2022 edition, please apply online at nlicic.org. 
Life Changers, if you want the tools to elevate yourself and accomplish any goals that will allow you to take charge, enroll in iLead Academy. You can take individual courses or become a subscriber to get courses discounted substantially. Also, we all love a good podcast. Tune in this week, episode 50, about self-talk and self-reflection. If you have any questions, stop by the table in the foyer for more info. Now you're caught up. Merry Christmas, and don't forget to mark your calendars. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Imagination. Image a world. IDEX Media.